Creators, what's up? It's Sally Hardesty, and right now I'm in my bathroom with the shower curtain filming this video as like a little backdrop-ish area. Oh, the toilet's open. <laughs> because I am currently in the process of moving to Chico. I'm transferring schools over there, so everything is in boxes, and I didn't want to film against like a blank wall. So that's why we're doing this, and I'm trying to get some videos accomplished, so when I am in my little transitional moving period, I don't have to worry about filming, and I can get right back to it afterwards. Today, we're going to be doing an advice q and I I really love doing doing these sorts of videos because you guys are just able to ask me for help on a lot of miscellaneous situations. A lot of the time I get direct messages from you guys. I'm not able to respond to all of them, which hurts me so much inside. Like I wish I could literally spend my entire life sitting there and reading and responding to all of your messages, but life just doesn't work that way. I only have 24 hours in a day and I have to sleep and film these sort of videos and eat and go to school and do all these other things. So this in a way I feel like is my way in a small, small way of responding to the people who I don't get to respond to personally. If you guys want to be featured in my next Ask Ally advice video, make sure you follow me on my social medias. I will put them on the screen here. I started college for the first time in a couple days and I'm freaking out because I'm so nervous. Any advice or tips about getting through college? Know that it's not your entire life. You know how when you were in high school and you're like, I'm going to be here forever. And now you look back and you're like, actually that was only four years. College is the same thing. If you're getting your associates, that's literally half the amount of time of high school. And sometimes college can take a little bit longer, but it's on your own time. You pick your schedule, you pick your classes, just keep that in mind that you've essentially done this before in a different way. And also in my opinion, college is easier academically. I know that sounds crazy. Maybe it was just the particular high schools I went to. I went to two different ones. It's not so forced, like eight hours every single day. I personally find it a lot more enjoyable. It can be extremely overwhelming, but just know that it's just four years and it's gonna be over before you know it. I'm a pretty personal guy. Anytime I've spoken to girls on social media, I come off as a stalker, like question mark or blocked dot dot dot. Me personally, it's not that I think anybody's a stalker. Soccer, but I'm just not one to form genuine connections with people online unless they're like a youtuber Like obviously it's my line of work now But I remember back in the high school days or when tinder first came out I was never on those sort of apps or like even really responding or entertaining people in the DMs There was one dude I dated in high school and he reached out to me over the DMs on Instagram And I was like hey like if you actually want to talk to me hang out with me like meet me in person Like you're cool But like I just don't know you like that and you always have different expectations online than you do in person Be more forward because not everyone also wants to draw on a conversation in their direct messages or text messages. What is your advice on having a crush on a boy, but he doesn't like you back? <sighs> Sometimes boys and girls will hide their feelings. They'll be like in love with you and act like they don't care because they don't want to get hurt. I guess the only way to know if he likes you is to straight up ask him. With nobody else around, you could tell him like no pressure, like nothing needs to happen. I just want to know because I have feelings for you. And they're either going to tell you one or two things. They don't like you or they do like you. But if they say no, then just know that you should move on. Advice on getting rid of acne and acne scars. Oh my gosh. I can make a full video on this. I used to be on Accutane. Fun fact, I don't really tell people that back in eighth grade. Honestly, I've just pretty much completely blacked out this time of my life. Like I've gotten rid of all the pictures where you could see and this was so long ago, but I had cystic acne. If you don't know what Accutane is, it's a medication that's like super serious and it gets rid of your acne, but you'll have super dry skin because of it and like other side effects. But they only get that to people who have really bad acne. So I had a really bad acne. I was bullied for it really bad and it did leave scars for a while. Honestly, everybody's skin is different. So you have to find a routine that works for you. Also, if you switch products like Proactive is your go-to and then you switch to Clean and Clear, you will break out so bad. I mean, unless you have a skin type that doesn't break out from that. But for me, for my skin type, if I switch products like that, my skin does not like it. My skin reacts really bad. If someone betrays you or hurts you, do you give them a second thought and give them another chance or do you completely erase them from your mind? It depends on the person. It depends on what I believe to be the person's intention. You can usually tell if somebody is genuinely sorry or if somebody had all motives the entire time throughout a situation and it was more than once or if somebody is a repeat offender for me I think it's important to forgive people and sometimes that takes time will everybody be in my life afterwards when they screw me over not necessarily there are some people if I think they're like low-key evil I don't believe that people are inherently evil or bad but people that I just don't think are very good people and I think they did have really bad intentions and didn't treat me the way I deserved the entire time then like I'm just gonna cut them off and never think of them again but if it was somebody who equally did a lot of good things for me like I was with them for a very long time or friends with them for a very long time it wasn't just like oh we had good times like they were a good friend for me like they did things that like almost counteracted the bad I'm gonna give them a second chance or a third chance so to speak more likely than not because they've just earned that for me but from people who like really don't deserve a second chance 
parents, I'm not gonna give it to them, and good luck with the rest of their life. So it's all relative, but don't be stupid. Don't be throwing out second, thirds, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, 29th, 90 seconds, 90 seconds, 90 seconds. I meant to say 90 second, like 9-2. Don't be giving out like literal hundreds of chances because people will take you for granted. Ow! My foot just cracked. This is so weird standing up in videos. I never do this. How did you deal with your first heartbreak and what's your advice to others on how to deal with it? How I dealt with it honestly was not the healthiest. I repressed all my emotions. It wasn't one of those things where I laid there awake at night crying my eyes out and thinking about that person. I tried to like erase them from my memory, which you can't do when you're in a relationship for a long period of time. My first love I was with for like two years and it was like a very real and very significant relationship. I literally moved here with him. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, then you already know all this. I dated a guy right afterwards who I really liked at the time, but I hadn't dealt with the repercussions or grieved from the previous relationship. Like I literally got in a new relationship right away. And I feel like a lot of people do that and they don't even realize that they're not ready for that because it just like feels great, but that's because they're ignoring their feelings and you can only ignore how you feel for so long. Even the feelings of just like loss. It's a process. Having a breakup with anybody or even if you weren't dating them, like getting your heart broken is a process. You need to give yourself time. And sometimes you don't even know that you haven't dealt with it. Like I thought I was done with that person. I thought I had moved on. I thought I didn't care about them. But the truth was I was just like pushing those feelings so far back that like I couldn't access them for a very long time. And then one day it literally came bursting out actually a couple different times because I'm not one who likes to bring my emotions to the surface if I don't have to. Like if I can tuck them away for a rainy day, I will. That's how I dealt with it. I suggest that you do not do what I did and also don't get other people involved because you're going to like break other people's hearts while you're still trying to get over that person. Even if you don't realize, hang out with your friends a lot, get your mind off things, but don't be hanging out with some new potential bays because one's gonna end up being your bay and then that's just it's not gonna be good oh my gosh I could sit on this rug and it's so much more comfortable advice on how to put on makeup so I am not a person who is naturally good at makeup or naturally enjoys doing all that sort of beauty stuff if I could have it my way I would never wear makeup and I typically don't unless I'm like posting a picture or filming watch YouTube videos also sometimes less is more and just get really good at the things that you do to your face I'm not someone who bakes their face with like all these different products. I'm just trying to make an effort with the products that I do have to know how to use them properly. It took me a lot of years to even be able to like do this. Advice on attempting to grow a YouTube channel. I have multiple videos talking about this in depth if you want that real, real advice. But if I just had to sum something up really quick, I would say consistency is key, but don't force content. Put out things that you're passionate about. It's ultimately quality over quantity. Half of these questions are like Q&A questions, so I'm just trying to skip over some of those ones. One of my best guy friends crosses the line a lot and really hurts my feelings. And I don't know how to tell him to stop because whenever I do, he thinks I'm kidding. Advice? I've been in your situation and sometimes people just have a more harsh sense of humor than others and they may not even realize that they are in fact hurting your feelings but it sounds like you have expressed that to them and they just kind of don't take you seriously and that sucks and sometimes you need to take a time out from those kind of people because at that point they're just being very inconsiderate and they really are your friend and they care about you they're gonna realize and they're gonna be like oh wait she actually wasn't joking like I took things a little bit too far. Is it okay to get back with an ex? That's all relative to your situation. I don't necessarily think it's the best idea because people break up for a reason, but I'm not gonna say I've never done it. I've done it way more than I probably should have. Usually if a person is a certain way, it doesn't just go away overnight. There are some cases where like, you know, people completely change their life and change who they are, or it was like some misunderstanding. I also feel like a lot of people have to attempt to get back with somebody in order to realize that it wasn't a good idea and to be solid in their original decision to break up. But don't spend forever down that route. Don't waste your time. Don't go back to them over and over. Can cheaters be forgiven. This kind of goes back with the other question. I mean, in my case, all my exes cheated on me. It's never okay. It's never okay to cheat on somebody, in my opinion. I believe in forgiveness. I don't believe in forgetness. You can't just forget those kind of things. You can't just erase them. It does take a toll on the way that you feel about that person and their relationship because how could it not? They betrayed your trust and I don't think it's healthy to stay in a relationship like that because nine times out of ten, they will do it again. Oh, my leg hurts. Ow. Oh. Oh. Do you have any advice on studying or exams? I feel like no matter how hard I study, I am so stressed out going into exams. Love you, Ali. Love you too. It all depends on the way that you best learn and retain information. Personally, for me, if I write something down, the act of me writing it down helps me to remember it. So if I make flashcards, for example, it's not even necessarily me using the flashcards to memorize the answers. It's me literally making the flashcards in the beginning that helps me to remember everything because that's just how I learn. Some people are audio, some people are visual. It just depends on your style of learning so 
you have to understand what that is for you and then study that way. Don't try to study the other ways that the teachers tell you to do or that other students are doing because they may not work for you. Also, this is what I learned in psychology. It's that you're supposed to make like personal connections that make sense to you, like acronyms and things that are silly like in your head that only you would like know. I think we answered enough for today's video or else I would be here all day and my leg is cramping and it like really, really hurts. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you are in fact new here. Turn on post notifications by hitting that bell twice right next to the subscription box. I also have a Patreon if you guys want exclusive footage, unseen photo shoots, private Snapchat, and more that will be linked below. Follow my social medias to be featured in my future video. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later, alligators. Bye.